This tutorial is about the basic concepts of fractions. What they are, what they look like and why we have them. A fraction is a way of writing part of a whole and it's formed when we divide a whole into an equal number of pieces. Now let's have a look. I've got a representation here of a whole. And let's say we want to divide it into four equal pieces. So there we've taken one whole and divided it into four equal pieces. So each piece represents one quarter. Now, I've now taken one quarter away. Now I've removed two quarters. If I take a third, that's three quarters. And if I take the fourth, so I've now got all four pieces, I've taken all of them, four quarters, which is exactly the same as taking the whole. Let's just return for a moment to the two quarters. Now two quarters is exactly the same as if I'd started with my whole and actually divided it into two pieces of equal size. And you can see that that's exactly the same as two quarters. So I can write two quarters as one half. Let's have a look at another illustration now. Here I have a bar of chocolate. It's been divided into six pieces of equal size. So we've taken a whole bar and divided it into six pieces. So each piece is one sixth. Now, let's say I'm going to share my bar of chocolate with the cameraman. So I want to divide the bar of chocolate into two pieces. So if I do that, we're each going to have one, two, three sixths. So one half is exactly the same as three sixths. But there's not just one cameraman, we've got two cameramen. So I need to share it actually between three of us. So now if I put my bar back together and I need to share it between three, we're each going to get two pieces. So one third is exactly the same as two sixths. But Let's say I want to eat all my chocolate bar myself, so I'm going to have all six pieces. So they're all mine. I'm not going to share them. So I take all six pieces and I've taken away the whole bar. So, fractions we can look at in two ways. We can look at it as the number of pieces that we've used divided by the number of pieces that make a whole. Or as the whole divided by number of pieces that, or number of people that we've divided it into. So here we have a whole bar divided into six pieces. Here we have the number of pieces that we've taken divided by the number of pieces that make up the whole bar.
Let's have a look at some other fractions. Let's say we have 3 eighths. So we've divided a whole up into eight pieces of equal size and we've taken three of them, 3 eighths. We could have 11 twelfths. So we've divided a whole up into 12 pieces and taken 11 of them. We could have 7 tenths. Here we will have divided a whole into 10 pieces of equal size and taken 7 of them. And we can have any numbers in our fraction. So we could have 100 five hundredths or three one hundred and sixty sevenths and so on. Now we've looked at representing fractions using a piece of card, a circular representation, our rectangle with our bar of chocolate. Let's have a look at one more before we move on and that's, let's see it on a section of number line. So let's say we have zero here and one here. So let's look at what three eighths might look like. Well, I need to divide my section into eight pieces of equal size. Now, obviously, this is an illustration, so I'm not actually getting my ruler out to make sure I've got equal size pieces. But hopefully, that's about right. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces of equal size, and I'm going to take three of them. So if I take one, two, three eighths, that's where my three eighths will be. Let's have a look at another one. This time we'll look at 11 twelfths. So we need to divide our line up into pieces. So we have 12 pieces of equal size. OK. So we want 11 of them, so we need to count 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So our 11 twelfths is represented there. Let's look more closely at our fraction a half. Now, we've already seen that a half is exactly the same as two quarters, and it's exactly the same as three sixths. Well, it's also the same as four eighths, five tenths, twenty fortieths, ninety nine, one hundred ninety eighths, and so on. We could go on. And what we have here is actually equivalent fractions. Each one of these fractions are equivalent, they're the same as each other. Now, this form of the fraction, our half, is our fraction in its lowest form. And often we need to write fractions in their lowest form. It's much easier to visualise them actually in this lowest form than it is in any other form. So we often want to find their lowest form. Well, let's have a look first at finding some other equivalent fractions. So let's say I take three quarters. How do I find an equivalent fraction? Well, what I can do is multiply the top number and the bottom number by the same number. So let's say I multiply by 2. 
if I multiply the top number by 2, I must also multiply the bottom number by 2, so that I'm not changing the fraction. 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8. So 6 eighths is a fraction equivalent to 3 quarters. Let's try another one. This time, let's take our 3 quarters and multiply it by 3. The top number is multiplied by 3, so must the bottom number be. 3 threes are 9, 3 fours are 12. So 9 twelfths is equivalent to 6 eighths, and they're both equivalent to 3 quarters. Let's do one more. This time, let's multiply both the top number and the bottom number by 10. So we have 3 times 10, giving us 30, and 4 times 10, giving us 40. So another fraction equivalent to 3 quarters is 30 fortieths. So it's very easy to find equivalent fractions as long as you multiply the top number and the bottom number by the same number. Now, we have some mathematical language here. Instead of using the word top number, I'll write it down, top number and bottom number, we have two words that we use. The top number is called the numerator and the bottom number the denominator. Now let's have a look at seeing how we go the other way. When we have an equivalent fraction, how do we find this fraction in its lowest form? Well, let's look at an example. Let's say we've got 8 one hundredths. Now, we need to find the number that the lowest form was multiplied by and that we ended up with 8 one hundredths. Well, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So we need to divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same number so that we get back to a fraction in its lowest form. Well, if we look at the numbers we have here, 8 and 100, the first thing you should notice is actually that they're both even numbers. And if they're both even numbers, then obviously we can divide them both by 2. So let's start by dividing the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 100 divided by 2 is 50. Now we need to look at our fraction again. We found an equivalent fraction, but is it in its lowest form? Well, again, we can see that they're both even numbers. Both 4 and 50 are even. And so we can divide by 2 again. 4 divided by 4 gives us 2. And 50 divided by 2 gives us 25. So another equivalent fraction, but is it in its lowest form? Well, we need to see if there is any number that goes both into the numerator and the, the denominator. Well, the only numbers that go into 2 are 1, which goes into all numbers, so that's not going to help us, and 2. Now, 2 doesn't go into 25, so therefore we found the fraction in its lowest form. So 8 one hundredths, the lowest form, is 2 twenty-fifths. So when a fraction is in its lowest form, the only number that will go into both the numerator and the denominator is 1. Those numbers have no other common factor. Now, if we look here, we can see that in fact we could have divided by 4 straight away instead of dividing by 2 twice. Well, that's fine. If you've noticed that 4 was a factor of both the numerator and the denominator, you could have gone straight there doing 8 divided by 4 was 2 and 100 divided by 4 was 25 and then check to see if you were in the lowest form. That's fine. 
but often with numbers, larger numbers, it's not always easy to see what the highest common factor is of these two numbers, the numerator and the denominator. So often it's easier to work down to some smaller numbers and then you can be certain that there are no other common factors. Now, if we take all the pieces of a fraction, like I did with my chocolate, I took all six of them. That's the same as six divided by six, and that was our whole. And any whole number can be written this way. So we could have three thirds. If we take all the pieces, we've got one. Eight eighths. If we take all the pieces, we've got one. Now, I'm going to rewrite our mathematical words, numerator divided by denominator, because we're now going to look at fractions where the numerator is smaller than the denominator. And we have a name for these type of fractions, and they're called proper fractions. And examples are a half, uh, three quarters, one sixth, seven eighths, five tenths. You see, in all these cases, the numerator is a smaller number than the denominator. And as long as that is the case, then we have a proper fraction. So we can have any numbers, 100, 150ths, for example. Now, if the numerator is greater than the denominator, then the fraction is called an improper fraction. And some examples would be 3 over 2, or 3 halves, 7 fifths, 8 quarters. We could have 12 eighths, or we could have 200 one hundredths. And in all these cases, the numerator is larger than the denominator, and it shows that what we've got is actually more than a whole one. All these fractions, the proper ones, are smaller than a whole one. We haven't taken all of the pieces, three quarters, we've only taken three out of the four, one sixth, one out of the six. So they're all smaller than a whole one. With improper fractions, they are all larger than one whole one. So if we take 3 over 2, for example, what we've actually got is 3 halves. Now, improper fractions can be written in this form, or they can be written as mixed fractions. So let's have a look at our three halves. And what we can do is put two halves together to make the whole one. And we've got one half left over. So that can be written as one and a half. So they're exactly the same, but written in a different form. One is a mixed fraction and one as a top heavy fraction an improper fraction where the numerator is larger than the denominator. Let's have a look at another example. Let's say we had eight thirds. Just move those out of the way. Let's count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight thirds. 
How else can we write that? How do we write that as a mixed fraction? Well, what we're looking for is how many whole ones we've got there. Well, if something's been divided into three pieces, it takes three pieces to make the whole one. So that's one whole one. There we have another whole one, so that's two. And we've got two thirds left over. So eight thirds is exactly the same as two and two thirds. Let's look at one more. Let's say we had seven quarters. Now, we know that there are four quarters in each whole one. So we see how many fours go into seven. Well, that's one. And we've got three left over. So we've got one and three quarters. Let's have a look at one more. Thirty-seven tenths. Now, we've split something up into ten pieces of equal size. So we need ten of those to make a whole one. So we need to see how many tens, how many whole ones there are in 37. Well, three tens make 30, so that's three whole ones. And we've got seven left over. So we've got three and seven tenths. Just move those. Now, let's have a look at doing the reverse process. So if we start with a mixed fraction, how do we turn it into an improper fraction? Let's look at three and a quarter. And if we look at this visually, we've got three whole ones. and one quarter. And what we want to turn it into is all quarters. So we have a whole one and if we've split it into quarters we know that the whole one needs four quarters. So we have four there, another four there, another four there plus this one. So we've got three fours, a 12, plus the one gives us 13 quarters. So three and one quarter is exactly the same as 13 quarters. Well, let's have a look at how you might do this if you haven't got the visual aid. Well, what we've actually got here is our whole number and the fraction. We want it in quarters. So what we're doing, let's write it again. We're actually saying we want four quarters for every whole one. So we've got three lots of four. And then what we're adding on is our one. And these are all quarters. So it's the whole number multiplied by the denominator We've added the extra that we have here, whatever this number is, and those are the number of quarters we've got. So we've got our three fours of 12 plus one quarters, so 13 quarters. Let's have a look at one more example. Let's say we've got five and two ninths. We want to turn it into this format. Ninths. Well, if we want to take a whole one, we will need nine ninths. And we've got five whole ones. So we're going to have five times nine, lots of ninths this time. And then we need to add on the two ninths that we have here. So our five nines are 45 plus the two, and they're all ninths. So we have 47 ninths. Any whole number can be written as a fraction. So for example, if we take the number 2, 
If we write it with the denominator of 1, we've written it as a fraction. And any equivalent form, so we could have 4 over 2. 30 over 15, and so on. So any whole number can be written as a fraction with a numerator and a denominator. So, fractions. They can appear in a number of different forms. You might see proper fractions, improper fractions, mixed fractions, and you can see lots of different equivalent fractions. So they're all different ways that we see them.